So now you should be at the stage where you have imported both of your models from the one DICOM data set. Here you can see I've got the adult skin in here now and I've gone through the steps to uh, clean it up, reduce it and all that sort of stuff. And I'm down to still a fairly high polygon count. This model itself is 366,000 but in total I have less than 700,000 polygons so I'm hoping that'll be okay. So if I just hide this, you can see the skull is still there underneath. I haven't moved anything yet, and you don't want to do any movement of the individual objects on their own. They're in anatomical position relative to each other from the DICOM data set, and we want to preserve that relationship all the way to the end of the illustration. So the easiest way to do that is to open your outliner and select both the skin and the skull holding down shift to select both of them and going to edit group. So this just creates a sort of container that holds both of these and when I select the group both of these are also selected. So now if I want to move something in Maya, so I'm not moving this right now, I'm just moving my camera. Um, you'll remember that W is the shortcut to open up the move tool and you can see its manipulator handles over here but they're not centered in the middle of my group. By default, when you create a group, the center of the group is in the middle of the world, no matter where the objects are. So we want to get this manipulator into the middle of the object. To do this, with the group selected, not the children of the group, not these, container, uh, these objects contained within the group, but the group itself, we can go to Modify and Center Pivot. It will pop there. Now we want to move the group to the middle of the world. You can see this little smudge down here. This is actually my my grid that shows me where the middle of the world is, where these two dark lines intersect. So I could grab this thing and start to move it over, but a simpler way to do that is to go up here at the top of your screen. I'm going to save my file before I do anything else. Um, up here at the top of your screen on the right, um, you'll see something that looks like this. You might not see the X, Y, Z here, but you might see something more like this. If you click on this little icon here and go to Absolute Transform, you have to have the Move, the move Tool selected. Uh, that's the W key, remember. Uh, and then you can type 0, Tab to the next window, 0, Tab to the next window, 0, and Z, and hit Return. And you can see that my model pops to the 0, 0, 0 position in the world. That's 0 in X, Y, and Z, which is what these arrows indicate. Now this model is actually still quite big, so I'm going to reduce it to 10% its actual size. Um, and with the group selected again, we're going to select all of the scale attribute values. So I'm just I'm doing this repeatedly, so I'm just, if I just click away, if I click on the scale X number with the left mouse button, then drag down onto uh, to scale Z, and then just type in 0 0.1, it'll go down to 10%, its actual size. If I want to focus in on it, I can just hit F on the keyboard with it selected. And you can see now that it's in the middle of my world. It's not really oriented properly yet, but we'll work on that next. Now sometimes um, it's a little difficult to work with when it's all highlighted in green like this. So if you want to be able to select an object um, but not highlight it, in the window that you're in, in the panel view, you can go to um, show down at the bottom, turn off selection highlighting. So I still have it selected as you can see in the outliner, uh, but it doesn't show up as selected on the screen, which is what we want. Now all the manipulations I'm going to do have to do with the group. Don't do the individual models, but the whole group. And I'm just going to sort of roughly put this into position. Now I want to get out of my perspective window here. Now you can see selection highlighting is still turned on in these other windows, so I'm going to turn it off in each. And you'll notice the head is upside down. So here in the front view, 
I can use the rotation manipulator to rotate the head around. Now it looks like it's upside down in the perspective view. That's just because our camera is upside down, so we can just rotate out of that. I'm going to turn off this heads up display now. It's kind of annoying to have there. So go to display, heads up display, and turn off poly count. I also have something called particle count turned on, so I'll turn that off too. You probably don't have that. So that's better. So now you'll notice that I kind of have it sort of rotated the way I want, but now my rotation manipulator is not quite centered anymore. So when you make these changes, when you want to sort of zero out these transformations in translation, scale, and rotate, um, every so often you can go to modify and freeze transformations. And you'll see that it just zeroes out all your values and it should straighten out the manipulator. Ah, I can see what's happening here. I froze transformations and it's recalculating my polygon reduce. Um, I guess I forgot to delete history after reducing the polygon on this skull. Pardon me, not on the skull, but on the skin. So I'm going to select this and go to Edit, Delete by Type, History, just to make sure that that is actually gone. Okay, so that's pretty good. Now we want to position this a little more precisely. We want to put it in the Frankfurt horizontal. And the easiest way to do that is if we can see the skull, but still move the whole group. So what we have to do first is put this model, the separate models, onto their own display layers. So if you look down here in the bottom right, there's a tab that says Display. If you don't see this, you might be in the Attribute Editor. You just have to click on this tab that says Channel Box. I already have a display layer for the skull. So you just want to select the, in this case, the skin, which I already have selected, not the group, but the skin. And in the display layer tab, over here on the far right, there's a little square with a circle on it. Click on that and it will create a new layer and add that skin. You can see if I turn that off, the V for visibility, it turns off the visibility of the skin model. So I'm just going to name this skin or something sensible. Now I can turn off the visibility of skin. I don't see it anymore, but if I select the group and make changes to the position of the whole group and then turn skin visibility back on, you can see it's moved too. So now what we want to do is to put this into the Frankfurt horizontal by moving the group. And the Frankfurt horizontal is a position where the bottom of the orbital margin is on the same horizontal plane as the top of the external auditory meatus, which is the top of the ear hole over here, right in front of the mastoid process, all that kind of stuff. So the easiest way to do this is actually to make a big flat cube that we can see in the side view and the perspective view. So let's do that. We want to go to Create, Polygon Primitives, Cube, and then R to go into Scale Mode, scale it up, and then grab the top scale. To scale it up equally, I just grabbed the middle square there. To scale it differentially, I can just grab this top axis and just squish it down so we've got kind of this big flattened plane. So we don't want to move this thing, just this poly cube here. But now if I select the group and go into E mode, which is rotate, and rotate this around a bit, W to go into move mode, push it down. And I'm just looking here and over here to see if these things are lining up. It looks like I've got to rotate this back a little bit more. That's pretty good. You can see that, of course, um, these things aren't perfectly bilaterally symmetrical. In fact, this needs to go down a little bit more, but the bottom of this orbital margin may go down a little more inferiorly to this one, a little lower than this one. Uh, but we'll just do 
the best actually the whole skull has to go down a little the whole group has to go down a little bit more I have to do a little more rotation get the top bottom of the orbit just showing so that's pretty good so this plane is going through the top of the external auditory meatus and through the bottom of the orbit could move the whole group down just a smidge there we go so that's good you don't need this cube anymore I'm gonna keep it though I'll just select it put it on its own display layer and I'll call this you know, Frankfurt H horizontal and just hide that and now I can reveal the skin and so now I've got both of these things right in place and they're both aligned to the Frankfurt horizontal plane so now my group has been moved around you can see the translate rotate have changed so I'm going to freeze the transformations again I'm going to delete ah, it's doing the polygon reduce again it makes me wonder if I forgot to reduce to get rid of the polygon reduce on the skull maybe I saved before deleting history it wasn't the skin so this is one of the things that can cause crashing forgetting to delete history and that sort of thing so I'm going to select the skull edit delete by type history and select the skin again edit delete by type history just to make sure and then group one for good measure edit delete by type history and I'm going to do a little investigation here I'm just going to open up something and you don't need to do this necessarily but just to show you if I open up the node editor if I look at the adult skull and I map out its input and output connections. I'm looking to see if that poly reduce is attached to it somehow, and I don't see a node for that. The adult skin, I'm going to map that out. And I also don't see anything there. So I'm hoping that all is good. If I delete history again, sorry, if I go to modify and freeze transformations, let's see if we get the poly reduce. Nope, we didn't. So I must have left the poly reduce, the reduce function on the skull without deleting history. So now I've done all that. Of course, I want to save my file. And we can leave these things in the group. We can control their visibility here with the display layers. So when we want to render one and then the other, then these are all positioned correctly. Now you'll want to go into the front and side views and make sure these things are actually pointing in the right direction. So my front view, the face is pointing toward me. The side view, I'm seeing the left side, which is good. You could do the right side, I suppose, but try and might as well just follow this example and do the left side. Now, one thing I'm seeing here is that you can see the back part of the mandible here or the far part of the mandible here I kind of want to rotate this around a little bit um, to get it facing right so they're lined up so if I rotate around this axis here just grab this middle line I'm not changing the Frankfurt horizontal at all now if I rotate down this way I try and do align the the border of the mandible now I am messing with the Frankfurt horizontal a little bit now, one thing I have to make sure, what do I have selected here? The group. Good. That's what I need to have selected. If I look in the front, this is pretty good, but it's not quite right on the midline. So I'm just going to go into move mode, just shift it over a bit. I'm looking for this dark line kind of going between the eyes, between these two central incisors and down. Now, of course, there's no way to make that perfect, but make it good enough. I'm going to freeze transformations, modify freeze transformations again. I'm going to turn on my cube, the Frankfurt horizontal, just to make sure things are still good. I think I might have to rotate it, maybe move everything up. This is the group I'm moving, always the group. So that's pretty good. You can see 
this one is slightly off the Frankfurt horizontal, but there's no way to make it absolutely perfect, just as close as possible, especially from the side that we're going to be rendering it from. Actually, this could tip up a little bit. It's going to rotate the group up a little. Okay, so that's good. Save this. Turn off the cube. Reveal the skin. Select the group. And finally, modify freeze transformations. And I will save it again. So now we've got our model clean. Still, um, the skull and skin are bearing the same relationship to each other but the model is now in the frankfurt horizontal because they're in a group moving the group and i can control their visibility by turning the display layers on and off for rendering 